Um, good afternoon. Uh, I'd like to thank um, all of you for coming, um, but really thank all the organisers for all of their help in answering my bizarre emails. Um, and for putting on this, because I think it's a great idea. And um, what uh, Peter and I would like to do today, Mr. Peter, um, and I'm Matthew, um, is to give you kind of a warm up for what you can experience in the other room. Uh, so, interactive things next door, and then I'm also talking about this um, research project uh, tomorrow in the Digi Tag 2 session as well. Uh, so, what is that I'm talking about? Well, um, Denkin mit Lego. So, thinking with Lego. Um, I <coughs> spent some of my research time using Lego for research, of course, I'm not playing. Um, it, to use it to, and I also do 3D modeling, to think about buildings and the spaces that I'm working on. Um, and a few years ago, I wondered how I could try and develop this into a research project as well. And, and uh, I was awarded from the AHRC a follow-on uh, funding project, which is to work with schools, um, primary schools through to secondary schools. Now the project was initially uh, to take my research on um, Greek houses, daily life in ancient Greece, and to take it into primary and secondary schools, and to develop cross-curricular activities with that material. So to not only teach about Greek history, uh, which can feed into the primary curriculum or to classical civilization, GCSE or Cato, but to also teach about science and maths and literacy. And it's literacy I'll be focusing on tomorrow. And IT and other areas of the curriculum. And importantly, do this through play. Um, now, um, initially, the project was meant to be working with Lego in primary schools and then with 3D modeling and stats and using Excel and other pieces of software for the secondary schools. And it so happened that I was chatting to many of the secondary school teachers and they said, you're playing with Lego in the primary schools? Why, why can't we play with Lego? <laughs> so, um, so everyone's playing with Lego from um, seven-year-olds through to 18-year-olds. Um, and um, what we've been trying to do is um, to make studying the ancient world and thinking about archaeology um, more exciting in the school environment. Well, we're very aware that teachers are very pressurised when they're teaching. Archaeology isn't often seen as a relevant subject, as I'm sure many of you are aware of. Um, and um, as I'm sure you'll also be interested to hear, that many teachers I've been working with uh, aren't aware that women can be archaeologists, <laughs> particularly in primary school, but, and so they're not um, aware that you can, or that you can talk about it as a, as a career to um, children in primary school. Anyway, um, so that's the context for the, um, for the project, um, that I'm using these things to teach with. I'm going to let Peter talk about these buildings, but um, they're all structures that I've been carrying out research on for a few years, trying to write a book about for a number of years. Um, and um, we have a couple of Sicilian examples here. This um, house that's built with, um, it's uh, on the east coast of Sicily, it's built with volcanic lava stone. And um, this is a rock cut house, and then we've got one example of the little street of houses that we've got in uh, next door space. So can I have to Yeah, you? I don't exactly what to say, but yeah. So um, really what I'm, I'm using the Lego to get children or learners of all ages to have fun thinking about archaeology, but it's used in a variety of different ways and it's, it's built into maths and things like that. And 
part of the things I wanted to, Peter to talk about is how Lego has made us think about the archaeology and really has enabled and also constrained us to devise activities that can be used in schools. This may or may not just be. So, um, okay, yeah. Okay, I'll talk about Lego. <laughs> so, I guess Matthew's not being a powerful, but let's create some interesting documents that schools can use for Lego purposes uh, and teach about ancient Greek. Really, it was we, we want to build these houses out of Lego, can you do that? So, here's a plan of some houses that will insert us. Just a bit of as well. Oh, I've, I've put it's it on it it. <laughs> Yeah, I'm not trusted to build these houses. This is all Peter's work. <laughs> yeah, so if it's really rubbish and wrong, it is my fault. Okay, so the basic remit really was, we want to build some houses. Why don't we do houses at Olympus? Um, for a variety of reasons, partly because of the interest in um, properly laid out streets, orthogonal cities and so on, um, a key feature of some cities in the classical period. Why don't we do those? And there's enough of them so we can get different groups in classrooms to build their own house. They won't all be the same, but they can all work on the project. <laughs> so, so I just basically... I am performing now. <laughs> <laughs> you know, anyway, it's nice really to be the assistant manager. It's very interesting. Anyway, so I'm starting with plans of houses. So archaeological plans are we're all used to looking at. And it's quite a challenge, really, to go from a plan of a house that's got lumpy bits of stone here and there, and and we're talking about ruins, so, so low down bits of wall, that were the, the foundation parts of walls that were later you know, the rest of it built in wood brick. So we've got a certain amount of evidence to work with, but it's pretty difficult to go, here's a house that's X number of metres large, there's millions of them, how can we build it in Lego? So I guess my first issue really was to think about um, the scale of it, how big we want to make it. We want to make something that's big enough so that Lego characters look roughly the right sort of size. He's just lost his bottle of oil in one shot. Um, but at the same time, to keep within the sort of financial restraints, because we haven't got an enormous grant, it's quite good, but you know, we, we need to get up by Lego. So we're trying to find a way of scaling things so that it's affordable for schools. So this is where we've got the, the 32 by 32 studs uh, face plate that we've got. And if I'm really honest, the way we scaled it down, the minifigures are a little bit big. The houses would actually have felt bigger than that for people living in them at the time. Um, but they also would have been shorter because minifigures, I mean, no offence to anybody, but they're a bit wider and a bit shorter than most average people. <laughs> Exceptions are available. Um, so we've had to make a few compromises in terms of scale. We've also had to widen quite a few doors in order to allow passage for these guys. But generally speaking, what we try to do is make something that is buildable by school kids, school students, um, and also realistic in terms of uh, what it would have been like to live here. Now the ground floors are good in the sense that they're really based on the plans that have survived and exist. When it came to wanting to build another floor, well there's none of that archaeology available, it's not there. We've had to sort of use a sense of logic in terms of where the, the walls and the ground floor were, <laughs> base our rooms on that and I wouldn't say guess, but use our imaginations. Every bit of archaeology is interpretive in one sense or another. This is an interpretation of what it might have been. And in a sense, we want the, the school students to do that as well. So we get them to build a ground plan. We don't tell them what to put in each of the rooms. We give them a clue about this is the kitchen complex or this is the bathroom area or the courtyard. But we're allowing them to use their imagination to think about how these spaces would have been used. Combined with the, the online documents we've got that talk all about life in ancient Greece, they can learn about that and then try and revisage that in these houses. And Again, use their own interpretation. I will stop because I'm being way back. <laughs> <laughs> Any questions? <laughs> oh, by the way, the roofs were the worst and hardest bit. Never again. Um, but if you're interested, so I'm, we're talking about this uh, again tomorrow, and then of course, obviously, come next door, and there is a little display, and you can play with Lego as well. <laughs>